In this video, I will show you some of the advanced features of the dynamic graph that has been added to TouchDFX 4.15. In particular, I will touch upon the uh, how to use interactions and, uh, in a dynamic graph, and I will show you how to use some of the values you can retrieve from a dynamic graph um, in, uh, and use them in user code. I'll start out by opening the designer. I'll create a project uh, using the simulator 480 times 272, a standard resolution. Okay, <coughs> have my list of widgets here. Uh, let me add an, an image. For the background, I'll have a box with border as well. Also for the background, but for the background of the graph that we'll make here. Okay, um, and I'll add a dynamic graph to my screen as well. <coughs> okay, so here we see the dynamic graph, and the graph area itself is uh, taking up all the the space of the graph. But I would like to add some labels showing the values on the left side here for the y axis and the in the bottom for the x-axis so i will add some margin to the left here and i'll add some to the bottom as well actually i'll also add a bit to the top so that we can uh, have some extra space for the text that will go on top here Move down the property list, add major labels for the x-axis. Um, the font is a little bit too big for my taste, so I'll select one of the the one that is uh, already available uh, in the in the project. If I wanted a different one, I could add a new one here in the text uh, typography list. But I'll go with this one. Um, and for the y-axis, I will have major labels as well. Also using the small one. As you can see here, they kind of collide. And the right side of the text is very close to the graph. So I'll add some padding here. That is what it's uh, mainly for. So I can do like this and create some more spacing there. Uh, I can do the same in the bottom if I want that as well. So let's uh, go with this. <coughs> Additionally, I would like to have some uh, horizontal uh, grid lines as well. I'll put them on here. Interval, maybe I'll go for 20, each uh, step of 20. I'll make them slightly gray like this. Okay, uh, I'll try to run the simulator and just have a look that everything is, uh, is okay and then the, that we can compile and so on. Yes, I got the application here. Everything looks as expected. Okay, so let's try to add an uh, interaction or two. So here's uh, the interaction pane. I'll select a trigger that is graph clicked. The dynamic graph one is the one in question. The action I want to perform is call new virtual function. I'll call this graph one clicked. I'll add another one, graph dragged as a trigger. Uh, I'll call another function called graph one dragged. I'll generate the code and then I'll open up the code in Visual Studio. Like this. So I'll find the screen one view that I've been editing. The screen one view base is the generated class from the designer. I can find it here, or I can just press F12, 
and go here. So here we see I have the two virtual functions being defined. I'll copy those and add them to my screen one view, which is the one I can edit uh, without being overwritten by the designer. Uh, I'll move them to the um, source file instead. So like this. Uh, okay, and just to check that things are working, I'll do a printf, a touchdfx printf, uh, saying uh, hi. Compile. <coughs> And we will see that when I run the application and I press point, I'll get a prompt saying saying hi. And if we uh, look closely, we can see there are two highs there when I press and when I release. So that is that's because I'll get a a clicked event on on both uh, released and pressed and cancel actually. <clears throat> so, um, we, if we want to avoid that, and we want, so I can uh, look at the value provided to me. Here's a click event. So that's a basic click event uh, in TouchDFX. I can say get type on that one. And if it is uh, if it's a click event uh, pressed, then I want to print. Okay, and let me just uh, fetch some values as well. So let me see. So if we again go into the value and then uh, say index here. So this is the index that is closest to where I click. So in the dynamic graph, you have uh, a range of uh, points. So if we go into the designer, I can show you. So uh, we have a number of data points specified here. So 100 data points in this one. So that is what you see here. And each uh, one represents a data point. Um, the dynamic graph will do something. If you add more than, in this case, 100 data points, it will uh, do something. Either it will uh, uh, clear and wrap so that is uh, this one, or wrap and clear. Uh, this one is scrolling, so it will move the, the, the graph to the left and then add a new point. And this one is wrap and override, where it will uh, wrap around and then just override the, the point itself. So when I click at some point, I'll get the index of the nearest data point. So if I click here, I'll get uh, 20 and here 30 and so on and even if it has been cleared and then it will start over again with a zero to up to 100. So that index can be used to retrieve data from the graph so my graph is called dynamic graph one and if you have a look here there's a lot of index two functions so uh, I can have index to screen coordinates We'll use that uh, in a while, or I can get um, indexed to the data point y value as integer. So if I select that one and use the value dot index as argument, we should see the the value of the graph uh, where I click. So if I click here should be around 100. So now it says hi, 99, and so on. And it's the, the point where I press in the uh, x-axis. So even though I press up here, it will match this one down here. Okay, in a similar fashion, I could get, as you saw, I can get the screen coordinates of the, the, the pl plotted value on this graph. Um, Yes. Similarly, I can do this for the dragged. So if I do like uh, this, put it down here, 
let me say hi to, so we can distinguish the events. Compile again, run, and we can see I'll get a lot of dragged events here. Okay, so uh, let's do a little bit more uh, fancy stuff here. So what I would like to do now is to, instead of just printing out in the prompt where the value is, I would like some sort of info bubble to appear showing the value and following the graph line. To do this, I'll create a custom container that has an image as a background and a text on top. So let's create one of this. Uh, let's call it uh, info widget. Uh, I have an image here that I want to use. I'll add that to my project. Uh, add an image widget. Select this one. I want my custom widget to be of that size. I'll add a text area here. Uh, let's use bigger font. Uh, make it center, make it uh, remove auto size. So I want it to be exactly of this size, even if the text is too big. I want it centered. And I want it to be a wildcard. So I want to print a text here. So I'll type in these, or actually I could also just have pressed there, I would receive a wildcard. In here I'll say I want to use a buffer for this wildcard. Um, we can have an initial value of let's say uh, 10, just for examples. Um, here I need to remember, so I'm using the default font, I need to remember that I have to enter these wildcard characters that I want to use. If you are not familiar with the text and uh, how to use text and touch defects, I can recommend you to, to read more on that uh, in the documentation. But for now, I am just telling the system I want these characters to be available in this font. Okay, so now I have this custom container. Let me add shots one to my project like this. Okay, first of all, uh, I don't want it to be visible unless I press the button. So I would like to press here and it should appear there. So I'll put it out here, generate code. And when done, it is, I'll move to Visual Studio. Here. I've made some changes, so I'll just reload. Okay, if we move to my uh, generated code, I'll see here, I, and I have a if info widget one appearing. So let's see, if I click, I would like to move that one into the right position. So move to is a function that will move this. Uh, widget and invalidate the screen at the right positions. So I need an X and a Y coordinate here. So first of all, the um, so how to how, how to get that? So so first of all, I have the dynamic graph itself. It has an X uh, get X. So that's the the coordinate of the graph. And then I need the um, to get it. Um, to the right point, so I can say uh, here, and again use the index. So I have an index to screen X and an index to screen Y. So if I use this one, I'll need the index, that's this one. I should be good then, more or less, because I, I need some extra, but I'll, I'll show you in a minute. So I'll do the same for the Y. <clears throat> so 
So get y and get y here. Okay, let's see how that plays out. Yep, so it appears here. So it's slightly off. I, I was expecting the right corner of the, or left upper corner of this to be placed at the graph where I press, but it isn't. So what I'm missing here is that I should be uh, what I what I get. So this index to screen X is relative to the the graph area, which is here. So I'm missing the the margin I have here. So I need to add that to both of them. So if I say dynamic graph one, um, get graph area margin left. And for this one, um, get graph area top like this. Compile, let's see if the position is correct now. Yes, it's better. So the image, of course, has this transparent part up here. So that's the corner of this that matches the, the graph. Okay, great. Okay, so what if I want to do the same when I drag? <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll make a a function now saying uh, update uh, info widget position, and I want to have an index for that one. Create the implementation in the C++ file. Um, so basically, I will be doing this down here. And I'll use the index for that. So if I call update with the value.index, I'll have the same behavior here. And I'll remove the printf. now yeah so I should have the same behavior here compile run again and we'll see when I drag it will move like this okay great so let's update the value here so it's not 10 all the time so for that, I will go to containers, info widgets. So just like a screen, I have a, a class for the info widget where I can write my code. So one update uh, screen, the value. <laughs> so for doing this, you need uh, the sn printf in the Unicode class. So here, I, I, as you might remember, I had the designer create a a, um, a buffer for me. So if I go to the info widget base class, which can be found here, I see that I have my buffer and a predefined size for that one. So I'll use that one. I'll use the correct size. And then I'll just add um, the number. So value. So a simple thing like that. Remember to invalidate the uh, text area that holds this value. So I'll do like this. Okay, so now I have an update function here. It goes uh, back to this again. I could say in this. So here I want my info widget to be updated. Now I need the value of this. So I should be able to find that here. So again, the index that I have clicked on, I would like the y value as an integer, like this. 
compile and run. And we see the value being updated accordingly. Now let's add some more dynamics into our uh, application. So what you can do there, normally in an application you would receive some external event uh, and based on that you will insert some value in your, in your dynamic graph. Here we just simulate that by uh, using the um, handle tick event. So that's an event called uh, periodically by TouchDFX each time the, the screen is refreshed. Um, so I will introduce a member called uh, tick counter, which I will use to control how often I insert into the into the graph. So initialize it to zero. Uh, I need an implementation of this here. Um, okay, so I'll increment my tick counter, and each uh, let's see each third time. I want to insert uh, a point into my graph. Uh, yes, and for that I will need some sort of uh, randomness, so I'll include uh, math.h. To insert something, as you can see in the, in the basic uh, graph example provided in the design, uh, I will say add data point. Uh, and then let's see. So if I do like this, I use the sign function. Uh, like this. So if I add one, then it will be this function will vary between zero and two. And my range for the graph is from zero to hundred in the y axis. So if I multiply this by, let's say, 40, I should have a, a um, nice looking wave. Yeah, okay, so I want to uh, enter integer values in this particular graph. And I need to do like this. Okay, so what is going on here? Well, I shouldn't be doing this. That's the error. So actually the error was that I did not have float there and not that I needed to convert it. So here you see the sine wave ranging from zero to 80. Great, let's just add our, a little bit of randomness to this. So random Modulo uh, 10. <clears throat> okay, so now we have a nice, more or less random graph here. And as you can see, we have the delete or wrap and clear, as it's called, dynamic behavior. I can still use this, of course, um, like this. <coughs> I'll actually try to, to go and change it. So if we move over to the designer, I can try to have this one instead, the dynamic behavior of, uh, of uh, scrolling. Generate code, go back here again and build. And you'll see here, do like this. And I can, each time I click, I'll get a new position. But if I'm just clicking here, it doesn't really look correct, I would say. So here I would like uh, it to be updated each time. So how can I achieve that? Well, if I just say update here, I would get that um, behavior, but I do not have the index value 
where I last clicked. So let me save that one. So uh, last uh, index. Last index zero. So instead of providing it here, let me update it and then use that value. So value dot index and then no argument here. I'll do the same down here. No argument here. And down here, instead of using index, uh, I'll use uh, last index. And the same goes for here, last index, and I will remove the argument to this method. Like this. And then this should be correct, then it will update the info widget with wherever I pressed or dragged last time. So we see this behavior here. Well, nice, sort of nice at least. <clears throat> okay, so if we go back to the designer and change the dynamic behavior again to uh, wrap and clear, we'll see a couple of things that we uh, need to fix. So at the beginning, I have my text box already clicked, and that's because my uh, I set this index to, to zero. It'll be updated when I clear it, but something like this is actually looking wrong as well. So a couple of things. So first of all, let's remove it so that it will not appear if if I haven't clicked. So for this, I would say I'll have a initial value of minus one. And down here, I'll say if um, last index is less than zero, well then I will move this one out of sight. I could also um, uh, set visible to, to false so that it would um, disappear, but I could also do something like this, move it out of sight. And if it's okay, then I'll do like this. Still. Okay. Let's check that out. <coughs> now it's not there at the beginning, and now it's there when I click and drag. Okay, so this problem. So I want to, when I clear the uh, the graph, I want to remove this as well. So how do I do that? Well, each time I add a new data point, I get the index that is uh, where it's added. And remember, the index is from zero to number of data points. In this case, a hundred, so hundred minus one, so from zero to ninety-nine. So when I clear the screen, I know the return value here will be zero. So if I uh, say new index, so where I add this, um, I could do like this. So if the uh, newly added index is zero, then I know the screen has been uh, cleared. Uh, if this one is zero, well, what could I do? Well, one idea was to say last index minus one. So if that is the case, then it's minus one. And as we did just create this uh, thing, if it's less than zero, it will be moved out of sight. It should work. So let us try it out. Put this here and it's removed. I could also have placed it on zero, of course. So I could have written zero here and then it would move back here. Okay, now I have this behavior instead. Okay, so that was what I wanted to show you in this video. Hope that it has been educational and that you uh, will try out all these nice features of the dynamic graph.